This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. This morning, what doctors are saying about preventative tests for women and at what age you should be getting these tests. Plus, we have some local crime that authorities need your help in solving. And an elderly man with dementia is still unaccounted for. This morning, Sparks Police are asking for your help. These stories top your news right now at 4.30. It is Tuesday, February 17th, 2015. Good morning. I'm Andy Cabral. And I'm John Potter. How you doing, pal? I am well today. How are oh, you? I'm good. It looks good out there. Uh, good morning. Jeff is smiling. Jeff always smiles. Hey, yeah. No He's big deal guy. there. <laughs> What's up, Jeff? Hi, John and Andy. Uh, doing great this morning. Hope you are as well. It's going to be another beautiful day today. Temperatures cool out there this morning. 36 at 8 o'clock, but 68 for the high today. We'll talk about that coming up. Have a great day. This morning, Sparks Police continue to look for a missing man who they say has dementia. Yeah, and they are asking for your help. Uh, take a look on this. 83-year-old uh, Bobby Blanton was last seen near Willow Creek Park on Prater Way in Sparks last night just before 7 o'clock. Blanton is around 5 foot 9, about 160 pounds with gray hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a dark color jacket, a hat and glasses with a silver metal frame. Police don't know where he may be trying to go, but he does have a contact in Bakersfield, California. If you know anything about his whereabouts, call Sparks Police at 353-2231. Also new this morning, Sparks Police also looking for a man who they say tried to rob a woman while she was making a deposit at the bank. The incident happened around 1130 last night at the Nevada State Bank on East Prater Way. The victim was making a work related deposit when a subject approached her vehicle, pulled out a handgun and demanded the deposit bag. In response, the victim threw the bag into her car and drove off. During this time, the victim damaged her car, although she was not hurt. The suspect is described as a man wearing dark clothing, including a hooded sweatshirt, knit cap and jeans. Police say there is a possible second suspect, although there is no description at this time. Anyone with information is again asked to call Sparks Police at 353-2225 or secret witness at 322-4900. Also new this morning, the Carson City Sheriff's Office is looking for the man who robbed an adult entertainment shop in Carson City last night. The armed robbery happened at the Adam and Eve store on Highway 50 last night at about 8 o'clock. That's when the man walked into the store with a handgun and pointed it at customers and demanded money. He made off with an undisclosed amount of money on foot. He's a white man between 5'4 and 5'8 with a stocky build, wearing a dark hooded sweatshirt, light colored pants, black gloves, black shoes, and a dark colored bandana over his face. If you can now find him, call the sheriff's office at 887-2020, extension 2. And this morning, we have an update on a bill aimed at providing more funding for school construction. It is being considered by the Nevada legislature. Now, yesterday, the state Senate passed Senate Bill 119 in a party line vote. The bill would allow school boards to extend construction bonds beyond the period approved by voters and would clear the way for building to ease overcrowding. However, it would also suspend prevailing wage rules on school construction, a move that Democrats oppose. It now heads to the Assembly for consideration. And the Senate Government Affairs Committee reviewed Senate Bill 105 yesterday. That would allow bar owners to allow dogs into their businesses, dogs and bars. Some business owners say a canine friendly bar could be a great idea. Yeah. But there are also some concerns like customers with allergies or simply a misbehaving dog. The bill leaves uh, the final decision to individual business owners. Different bars are more set up for uh, dogs, I guess I should say, if they're more of an outside bar or if they're really small, they might not be ready to have dogs. But certainly it would be a, uh, a great thing to be able to say that you can accommodate dogs. Hey, dogs behave better than humans in bars. <laughs> the laws today allow the government to regulate dog issues at taverns and saloons. And our unusually warm weather is bringing out some of the area's six-legged creatures well ahead of schedule. Ugh. Adult insects like box elders and bees tend to venture out first and eggs start hatching when average daily temperatures are higher than 45 degrees. In years past, we've seen large populations of nuisance insects like those Mormon crickets. By hatching this early, they could have more time to lay eggs. But 
On the flip side, they could likely face a deadly cold snap before spring. Even though there may be food and it, co but it cools off for another couple weeks and maybe rains, hopefully, um, that will actually take care of the population. Well, the experts tell us insects react very quickly to weather, so it's unknown how the warm temperatures and ongoing drought could affect insects this year. Ew. You're not a bug fan, huh? Heebie-jeebies. <laughs> I'm looking with this weather any day now for those ants. Oh, yeah. To start showing up on the driveway. You better get a big cold snap here going here, Jeff. Let's get a check on the forecast. Hi, what Jeff. can we expect? Hi, John. And I know there's a lot of ladybugs uh, oh, for yeah? some reason really? yeah, around my house. I don't know. But um, anyway, good morning. It's certainly been warm enough to bring those bugs out. Temperatures uh, yesterday were in the 60s. Today we're going to be in the upper 60s. So we're going to start to warm things up beginning today. Out there right now, clear skies, beautiful morning. Uh, winds are picking up just a little bit up at Slide Mountain, uh, but not too bad. And it's going to be another nice day today. 21 degrees in Lovelock. We have 20 in Winnemucca. Some cold temperatures out in Eureka and Ely with teens there. 27 for you at South Lake Tahoe. Here in Reno, it's a beautiful morning. We have a clear skies, green burn coat, and a temperature of 36 degrees. Pressure high, 30.20 on the barometer. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that indicates a big ridge of high pressure over us. That's going to keep us sunny and dry for the next uh, several days at least. A high of uh, 51, that's the average high. Uh, average high is 51 degrees. We'll make it up to 62, uh, actually 68 today. Again, we did 62 yesterday. So warming things up for the next couple of days. And again, no clouds out there. That high pressure system keeping everything away from us. So temperatures today will uh, start out on the cool side of things. 36 at 8 o'clock. Again, not terribly cold uh, considering we're in February. 58 at noon. Uh, that's just uh, crazy. That's above our average high for this time of year. 50 so we'll make it up to 68 degrees today and it gets even warmer in the seven day forecast before we cool it down for the weekend. So we'll talk about all of that in just a few minutes. Have a great Tuesday, John and Andy. Back to you. Well, there's always March, Jeff. <laughs> in Health Watch this morning, some of the recommendations for preventative women's health have changed in recent years. Interesting stuff here. Like pap smears, which used to be performed each year on women in their 20s, are now recommended just once every three years. For women over 30, some doctors say one pap smear every five years is enough, alongside a human papilloma virus testing. Health experts recommend screening for a colon cancer with a colonoscopy starting at 50, and women should get one mammogram per year starting at age 40. Of course, other factors like genetics, family history, weight, and lifestyle can all affect your health. And this morning we do have an update on Nevada State Senator Debbie Smith. She underwent uh, surgery to remove a brain tumor, tumor earlier this month. Now, in a statement, Smith said she was discharged from the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. She will remain in the city for the time being to follow up on her treatment. She says she's feeling good and wants to thank everyone for all the support. Yeah, Money Watch, I was going to gripe about this yesterday. Uh -huh. I'm sure you notice uh, gas prices are really going up. I know, a lot. Um, where are they now? How high will they go for that? We're going to turn it over to Landon Miller, who's live at Smith's gas station at Damani Ranch. Hey, Landon. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, at this gas station behind me, you can tell that the price for a gallon of unleaded is $2.25. That's the cheapest around by far. But say, hey, if you were to come here yesterday, maybe a week ago, or even a month ago, that price would have been much, much lower. AAA estimating that the average price for a regular gallon of unleaded in the Reno Sparks area is $2.56. What? That's up from $2.45 last week and $2.40 last month. As for the reason why it's going back up, it's really a combination of many, many things. From oil rigs shutting down in the Gulf of Mexico, oil workers being laid off, to the cold weather in the east. It's a global problem, and uh, it's, it's something that is absolutely essential to our, our way of life. Was it awesome? Absolutely. Um, but yeah, the way with what's going on with our country right now, um, Anytime gas goes down, it affects people. Cheap gas, all right? Where can you get it? According to our friends or our buddies at GasBuddy.com in Reno, right here at the Smiths on Double R Boulevard, cheapest in town at 225 in Sparks. Cheapest gas is at Costco, 235. But if you're not a member, it'd be the Arco Station, Victorian Avenue at 237. And for our buddies in Carson City, it's the Eagle Gas Station, South Carson Street. Very jealous of you guys down there. $2.06. Sense, I know. 
One of these days, I wish I could move down to Carson City for that reason. Now, this is a trend, by the way, that's expected to continue because just in a matter of weeks, oil refiners will be switching to their summer blend of gasoline, which means gas prices will continue to rise. Happy Tuesday. Covering the story live in South Reno, Landon Miller, Channel 2 News. All right, 225 in Reno. That is good. Looking around, well, now it is. <laughs> Looking around the nation, late UNLV basketball coach Jerry Tarkanian is going to receive an honor this week that only four others have received before him. Several casinos on the Las Vegas Strip will be going dark in honor of the Hall of Fame coach who passed away last week at the age of 84. The casinos have agreed to dim their bulbs for a few minutes tomorrow night. Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Ronald Reagan all received that same tribute. And all through the month of February, if you would like to enjoy a seafood lunch or dinner while helping the Nevada Humane Society, you're in luck. Something special. The Humane Society and Rep Scallion Seafood House are teaming up to help homeless pets. It's all part of the Humane Society's year-long Bone Appetit program. It will highlight 12 restaurants with a cause. And the first is Rep Scallion Seafood House in Reno. When you pay, you want to mention that you're there to support the Humane Society and 20% of your bill will be donated. It's a pretty good deal. They've uh, they've done that before. They have, yeah. They haven't announced. I remember what telling the, next... the waiter, "Don't forget, humane like society." Twenty percent to the humane society. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good deal. They haven't announced the other eleven yet. This is the first of the, of the twelve. So making me hungry, dear. Mm -hmm.